Well, unknown, unknown unknowns leap at you from places that you wouldn't expect because otherwise you would have planned for the damn things. So they're the things that are always like poking their beak up at you when you least expect it. They're just like, say, serpents in the Garden of Eden. That might be one way of thinking about it. You can't keep the damn snakes out of the garden. And that's because you can't make a bounded area and keep the complexity out of it. The complexity always sneaks back in. Try protecting your children from the internet, for example. You can't make a bounded circumstance and get rid of all the complexity. It always comes sneaking back in. So, what would be an unknown unknown? This is a good one. Here, you have an intimate relationship. You've had it for 10 years. You trust your partner. So, what does that mean? You know where you are. You know who you are. And you have a pretty good idea of, who, of where you're going. And then one day you find out that your partner has been cheating on you, not with one person, but with three people. And for the whole 10 years. Well, hypothetically, that comes as a shock. Although you may have ignored many intimations that such might be the case. Irrelevant. Let's say it comes as a shock. Well, what happens to you? Well, you don't know where you are. You don't know where you've been. That's interesting, eh? Because you think you know where you've been because you've already been there. But all of a sudden something can happen so that you are so flipped over that you don't even know where you were. So that means in some sense the past is dependent on the present. A very peculiar thing. You also have no idea where you're going. In terms of not knowing where you are, that's deep, eh? Because you might think, well, I, you know, I thought I was in a marriage. That turns out to be wrong. I thought I knew who my wife or husband was. That turns out to be wrong. I concluded on the basis that I knew my wife, that I knew something about women. That turned out to be wrong. I thought I was in a relationship with someone I could trust. That is wrong. I don't know enough about trust. I'm obviously too gullible. And so what that does is throw virtually everything that's ever happened to me in severe doubt, right? That's the emergence of chaos. And that's this. Sometimes you're going from point A to point B and something you don't expect manifests itself in the middle of your plan, but it's not such a catastrophe because you can just work around it. And then sometimes something pops up and like, you just do not have a plan anymore. And so then you might ask yourself, just exactly where you, are you when you don't know where you are? And I would say, that's a place. And it's actually a place that's well documented in classic religious and mythological stories. That's chaos. The Taoists, for example, they believe that the world is made out of chaos and order. Well, order, that's where you are when what you do gets you what you want. Chaos. That's where you are when you have no idea what's going on. And you might ask, well, is there a way that you should act when you're in chaos? And the answer to that is, there better be, because it's a place you're going to visit several times during your life. And everyone visits that. That's why it's an archetypal story. That's the descent to the underground. The underground is that horrible place that lurks underneath all of our presuppositions. It's the frigid lake underneath the thin ice that everybody's skating on. And it's something that can manifest itself at any moment. That's partly why in the Taoist symbol, the black paisley is chaos, by the way, and the white paisley is order. In the order paisley, there's a little black dot. Well, that's because order can turn into chaos and does at any moment. And the reverse is also true. Chaos can turn into order at any moment. And insight will do that for you. You know, re alcoholics report that when they hit bottom. It's like there's a catalysis and they look at the world in a different way. You know, now they're a new person, they're back from the underground, they've risen from the dead, so to speak. You know, and it's partly because what looks like your right hemisphere is pretty good at um, inferring patterns in, in, in novel and chaotic places. It's kind of keeping track of things that happen to you that are anomalous. And it makes alternative maps of, of the world that are there for you to rely on, at least to some degree, if that ever becomes necessary.